Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to the first video that I have filmed in 2022. Although I put up my blush declutter on New Year's Day, I had actually filmed that between Christmas and New Year. So this is my first video that I am filming in 2022. Thus it's my first video in which I can wish you all the best for the new year. And let's just hope that it's a, a kinder one than the last year was to all of us. And let's be kinder to ourselves and to each other than we were in the last year as well. I am saying here and now I'm going on no buy in 2022. It is my no buy year point two. I will do a proper video about it but I'm saying it now so I can't back out of it because I have a lot of conflicted feelings about it. I don't really know that I want to do it which is probably a sign that I need to do it again but I will go into that in far more detail in a proper video but I'm just saying it so that I can't chicken out which is what I want to do if I'm honest but before we get into 2022 content that is 2021 content that needs wrapped up part of that is my my makeup rehab and what difference I made to my inventory in 2021 and this is my last empties that I need to work out I'm saying December empties this is actually my November and December empties but yeah, let's get on into them. Start with perfumes. So I used up two perfumes. The first of them was just a little sample worth $1 on my inventory. And it's the YSL Libre. I know this is like a super cult perfume. So I was quite excited to get a sample of it to try it out. And I did like it, but I definitely didn't like it enough to want to buy the full size. But we got a dollar towards my reverse rouge. And then the second perfume that I used up is my Jo Malone Tobacco and Mandarin Cologne. This was in my 12 pans of Christmas, so you saw me use that up in that project pan. And this was worth $65 towards my reverse rouge total. I really like this. As I said, I used it in my 12 pans of Christmas project pan because it's tobacco and mandarin, so it's a very Christmassy appropriate scent. I absolutely love this bottle. It's from the Bloomsbury set collection. So I will be keeping the bottle. I bought everything in this collection and I'm intending to work through them all and keep the bottle for display purposes so I'm not actually getting rid of any clutter through finishing this one up but I'm glad to have finished it up before it went off. I like the smell, it, to be honest if she re-released it in standard packaging I probably wouldn't go and buy it because I feel like I've got other scents that are now getting older in my collection that need used. If I was absolutely back to square one and had no perfume yes I would definitely repurchase it but yeah, I bought this specifically because it was part of that collection and because of the packaging and I'm glad I've used it up and I'm glad I got the use of it before it went off but I feel like now I've got She Came To Stay by Timothy Hahn and that's got that sort of, it's one that my friend Kim described as Christmas in a bottle so I feel like that's now going to be my sort of Christmas time scent going forward so I wouldn't rush to repurchase this one purely because of that but I very much did enjoy using it. So those were two items worth $66. Moving on to hair, I used up three products. So I used up two masks, the first of which was this Haas Coconut Oil. This was a bit heavy. It's a nourishing deep conditioner and it says all hair types, but I've got very fine hair that's very easily weighed down and I did just feel this was really, really heavy. I felt like it took ages to actually rinse out of my hair. I split it, I think I got four uses out of this sachet. I felt like as well the first time, I felt like I was in the shower for ages, then I got out and dried my hair and still found a lump of it sticking about. So yeah, I think this is for very, very dry, damaged hair rather than sort of fine hair. So from that point of view, I wouldn't go out and purchase this. I think I got this in a goodie bag or something, but it was worth $3 towards my diverse rouge. So I'm glad that I used it up. The other hair mask that I used was worth $8.40 towards my reverse rouge and it's the Olaplex number no. 3. This is a little 30ml size. So I do have the full size of this and that's also nearly panned. I think that'll be very early in 2022. I do actually quite enjoy this. I don't see all that much of a difference in my hair when I use this but I like the idea that I'm strengthening my hair because I've got quite fine hair. I'm trying to grow it longer than it is and I feel like anything that sort of strengthens the hair you know it saves it from doing that way that it goes kind of wispy at the ends and although it's long it's a bit sort of see through you know what I mean I'm quite into this I do feel my hair's maybe a bit sleeker and smoother when I use it but nothing I don't feel a massive difference if I'm honest but I, I like the idea that I'm strengthening my hair so I probably would repurchase it from that point of view and then the last product is a box of hair dye so I I think I've found my new hair colour. If you watch my 
money diary check-ins there's I know there's still the December one of them to go as well you'll know I've been on a bit of a thing because I used to spend so much money getting my hair done then when I tried to start my budget I just find kind of going and getting my hair done as often as I had been was just not sustainable so I've been playing around with different at-home hair dyes and trying to find different solutions and I think I finally found it I really really like this colour the L'Oreal Colorista in the shade Copper it was worth $5.99 towards my reverse rouge the only complaint that I would have about this is simply if I'm dyeing my hair at home I don't wash my hair very much I only wash my hair once a week so when I do this I don't need to wash it, which is fine because if I was getting my hair done in the salon that week, I wouldn't be washing it, so I wouldn't be getting the use out of my shampoo that week anyway, so that's not so much a thing. But you get a conditioner in this when you buy it, and I tend to get like two or three uses out of that conditioner. So when I'm only washing my hair and therefore only conditioning my hair once a week, I feel like having the conditioners out of this is a real inconvenience because it's stopping me from getting use out of my actual conditioners and my hair masks and I've been reflecting a lot recently and I've said this in my 2022 project pan intro which is that I think I disregard my hair care inventory because it's the smallest out of my hair care, skin care, makeup and perfume inventories. I kind of dismiss it and think of it as the least problematic but actually like I'm not going through that at the rate that subconsciously expected me to be going through it and being in makeup rehab and practicing that sort of more mindful tracking of what I own and what I use up and things has really opened my eyes to it. Overall, in terms of my budget, I'm obviously much happier to dye my hair at home. In terms of getting the conditioner with this, I feel like it really cuts down the amount of opportunity I've then got to use my own conditioners that I've actually picked and bought to bring in, but it feels super wasteful not to use them up like that. That's my only complaint, but the actual colour of this I really, really like, so I think my days of going to the salon could be done. For here in the months of November and December, I used up three products worth $17.39. Moving on to makeup, first of all, worth $26, I used up my Estee Lauder, um, this was called Garnet Desire Lip Gloss. I used this up in my 2021 Project Pan, so I won't bore you too much with talking about it and if you watched my lip gloss declutter you know I got rid of all the other ones in this formula but I'm still so proud of myself for actually finishing this up and using it, getting it to actually be out of my collection via usage and counting it towards my reverse rouge so yes very very happy to have finished that one up. Another project pan item from my 12 pans of Christmas rather than my main project pan is this Colourpop lip oil worth $8.00. Um, I don't love these lip oils. I feel like they feel moisturising at the time and then my lips feel drier once they've worn off than they did before we started kind of thing. Um, so I wouldn't really be looking to repurchase this. But again, I am so, so glad that I've actually finished it up and used it up um, to get it out of my collection and count it towards my reverse rouge. Something else that I will not repurchase. I have finally, finally finished the Urban Decay Perversion Mascara. So as you can see, the writing has all flaked off the tube because I've had it for about 100 years, it feels like, at this point. So this was a really, really big tube of mascara. It had 12 mils of product in it, which most of my mascaras have between like six and eight and they're still full size. You get a lot of bang for your buck. When this was first new, I felt like it was so wet, it went absolutely everywhere. I couldn't use it, so I had to let it dry out a little bit. It stayed wet for so long and even towards the end, although it had definitely gotten much easier to use than it was at the start. It was still such a messy mascara. I've got hooded eyes so I don't, I think that doesn't help anything. But I would just find like I would blink and this would be all over the place. You know, it just, it smudged, it did not stay in place. It, it just, it was so messy. I am so glad that I finished it. I'm so glad it is out of my life. It kind of got to that point where I almost decluttered it so many times but I'd been using it for so long that I kept thinking the end has got to be in sight and I want this, like I want to use this. I want, for how much I've, for how much time I'd spent with it by those points, I was like, it's worth pushing through just a little bit more to get it in my reverse rouge. In hindsight, I kind of wish I'd just decluttered this right at the start rather than pushing through what became like almost a year of using it on and off with other things. I do feel like I've beaten it and I'm happy for that, but 
absolutely never again will not bring this back in my life. This is a little mini of the NARS Climax Mascara. This had 1.8 grams of product in it. I have finished the full size of this mascara and I absolutely adore it. It is very, very smudgy. I do need to lock it down with a tubing mascara over the top, but I love the actual finish of it. It gives length, it gives volume, it makes my lashes look like they're fake, basically. I absolutely love this and would very happily have it back in my life, even though it is a smudger, so it's a faff because I need to lock it down. But I have very recently discovered the Hourglass Mascara, the Hourglass Extreme Lash, Extreme Lash Caution Mascara. And it doesn't give as much volume as this one did. It's much more of a lengthening and separating one. But it doesn't smudge. And that is just... Like, I mean, this this is a smudger. Like, if I don't lock this down, this smudges, like, immediately. It's not even just, like, by the end of the day it's transferred. It smudges from the get-go on me. So does everything, to be fair. So if you're somebody who is not oily, who mascaras don't usually smudge on, it may not smudge on you. But this is definitely a smudger on me. I love this, but I feel like the Hourglass one, like I think I'd almost forgotten what it was like to be able to use mascara and not need to lock it down. And it's just been so refreshing to start using that one and not need to lock it down. So I feel like I could see myself staying quite loyal to the Hourglass one in future, if I'm honest. But prior to discovering that, this was my favorite mascara. So I'm not making like, you know, long-term commitment promises. I probably will have this back in my life at some point and I'd also really like to try the Climax Extreme from NARS. For now the Hourglass one has pretty much unseated it. Those are my four makeup empties from the months of November and December worth $64.20. Moving on to skincare which always generates the biggest lot of empties, I used three sachet samples worth $3 to set it off. I used one Meissler water from Garnier worth $1. I have bought more of these in the full size to replace it but I've tried the hydrating one and the oil infused one. I think they were on some kind of an offer when I got them. So I haven't repurchased this specific formula. I do just want to see, you can kind of see it looks like there's a little bit kind of still in the bottom there but if I turn that down and squeeze it like, but if I turn this upside down and squeeze that little bit is absolutely not coming out. Like it just, I can't get it out, I can't get the top off. Like it's just not for, like it will twist but it will not come like off. I am counting it as done even though there's like a slither of product down at the bottom that I do find quite irritating that I can't get to. But yeah, that aside, I'm perfectly happy with this and I'm sure if I end up travelling again, whenever that may be, you know, I would repurchase this size specifically for travelling. But for use at home, I've got more of this brand but not this specific formula but I'm quite happy with it and yeah like I don't think I'll be purchasing any fancy upmarket more expensive micellar waters again in the future like I used to do. I used one cleanser worth $5.20 from Origins. It's their A Perfect World cleanser. It was fine. I find with Origins cleansers I find them quite drying in general um, but this was probably the least drying of the ones that I've had, I wouldn't rush to repurchase it. Like, it was just fine. It was non-offensive. It was non-irritating. It didn't seem to dry me out. It was just fine. I don't have anything more interesting than that to say about it. I used up two serums, the first of which is a little mini, the Chanel Hydro Beauty Micro Serum. This was worth $18.33 towards my reverse rouge. I don't mind it. I had quite a few Chanel samples to get through. And again, a bit like that cleanser, I feel like it's fine. I don't feel like like it's doing anything outstanding. I didn't feel like it was bad but yeah I didn't think it did anything magical and for the price of it I just don't think like I like Chanel makeup, love Chanel perfumes but I don't think I'd be getting into Chanel skincare anytime soon. The second serum that I finished up is my Kiehl's Hydro Plumping Serum. So this was worth $60 towards my reverse rouge. Absolutely love this serum. So if you watched my November Money Diary check-in, you will see me repurchasing this. I have tried more sort of basic budget-friendly hydrating serums and I do think they hydrate. But what this really does is that replumping and texturising side of it as well. It makes my skin just feel and look so much smoother, so much juicier. It really does make my skin look plumper in a way that just a more basic hydrating serum doesn't quite do. So although it is expensive, especially now that I'm taking 
my beauty replacements from my budget which will be continuing into 2022. It does do more than just like the hydrating serum for the ordinary or whatever. For my skin obviously it's about what your skin needs and where you want to spend that money. But yeah I am a big big fan of this serum and I do really really like it so it's one that I have already repurchased and where my budget allows me to I would like to continue repurchasing. I used up three eye creams the first of which was worth $22.50. It is completely empty. It's my Kiehl's Eye Alert that was in my £12 of Christmas project pan. I did like it. It was very lightweight, very much like a sort of gel formula. Quite happy. I would use it up again if I got it again, but I wouldn't rush to repurchase it. Then worth $24.66, I used up the Estee Lauder Advanced Night Repair Eye Concentrate. Now you can see there is still product around the sides of this and this is my complaint with this product. So it's on one of these and you can only actually get that around like so far. Base oh, can you see that? Like so far then there's product that it just, I have left this sitting upside down. I've left it in various different positions and it just became such a faff trying to get the end of this product out. It was such a pain in the neck. I actually like the product but from what I can understand, the bigger, like the full, this is obviously a sample, um, but the full size packaging is this packaging. You can't get into the top of it and it's thick so you can't just like cut it open the way you can with a tube. So yeah, I actually really enjoyed the product, but there is no way I would purchase this because there's so much product you then like can't get to at the end. Like, can you see the way that that's like scraped up at like here and then like at the bottom you just can't get to it and it doesn't matter because it's because of the consistency of the product if you leave it upside down it just it moves a little bit but you never get everything and yeah my understanding is that the full size of the product is the same packaging so there is absolutely no way I would pay for the full size of that product when the amount of product that you're not going to be able to actually get out of that is probably equal to like what was in this sample to start with do you know what I mean like absolutely not so yeah this is a definite no from me and then the last one is one that I could cut open it's Malin and Gatt's eye cream this was absolutely fine it was like a nice sort of cream formula as opposed to like a serum formula so it felt like just mentally like it was quite thick and quite nourishing and this was worth $14.40 towards my reverse rouge I used up my Dr Dennis Gross SPF this was worth $42 towards my reverse rouge I feel like I'm a bit torn here that SPF is a functional product so I feel like it's one that I when I'm taking my replacements from my budget and the thing is like I'm saying that because I'm then very aware of how much I'm spending on my replacements through having them in my budget but regardless of whether they come from like my budget that I track for YouTube or just my life budget it's how much money I'm spending on replacements in general no matter which pot of money that is coming from. So I feel like because this is a sort of functional health product it's one that I'm a bit like there's not really a requirement to spend luxury prices on it but I did actually really like this SPF and it does say it's like dark spot solution but again having said that like I'd be more inclined to spend more money on like a serum or a treatment product whereas I feel like your moisturiser and your SPF are supposed to only stay on the top layers of your skin if you're getting an SPF that's got like a super skincare benefit is it really is it really delivering that skincare benefit where you need it within your routine like is there a point in that I'm a bit torn about it, but I did actually get this in Cult Beauty did an SPF box last year and I got this and I think the whole price of the box was less than the price of this or it was the price of this and then you got like five other products. It was one of those ones. I feel like if there was like a value deal like that again with this in it, I would definitely, definitely repurchase this. I would need to feel like I was getting something more for the money than just an SPF. It's not quite worth the price of it on its own as a standalone product for me, but I do really like it. And if I could get it into my life with a discount or in like a value set or something, I definitely would bring it back in that way. Speaking of moisturizers, I used up five. I really didn't like the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. That's the one second from the right there. That was worth $8.96. I felt like everything I put on top of that pilled. I just wasn't into that in the slightest. Then the Chantecaille, which is the furthest left, that's their Rose de My Cream. That was worth $26.50. I didn't really like the smell of it. The actual texture and the product performance was fine. I didn't 
didn't like the smell. Alginous one, which is the dead centre, that is the power anti-wrinkle one. That was worth $9.92 and like, I'm not quite sure what that was doing, but I could feel that on my skin. Like, that was one that felt like it was doing something. Um, probably not for the, the sensitive amongst us. Elemis Pro Collagen Marine Cream, which is second from the left, that was worth $12.80. And it was fine. Like, I know that's quite a cult product, but it was just fine and I don't have anything more interesting to say about it. If I got it again, I would use it up again. But given that 5 mils was worth $12.80, there's no way I'm going to pay whatever the actual price of that product is. And then the furthest right is the Fresh Creme NCN, which is another super expensive one. So that's seven mils and that was worth $36.17. I actually quite liked that one. I would say I felt more positive about it than indifferent, which is kind of how I felt about the Elemis one. But there is no way that I'm going to pay whatever the price of a full-size jar of that is. So we can just move swiftly on from the moisturisers. Moving on to sheet masks. I used the Dr. Jart Ceramiden sheet mask worth $6. I felt like that was very, very rich, probably slightly too rich for my skin. I was a little bit blackheady the day or so after using it, but very, very good if you're super dehydrated. I have the full size of the Dr. Jart Ceramiden cream and I just use it when my eczema flares up and I feel like it's a really good mask to use maybe after you've been on a plane or something when your skin might be feeling really sensitive but it is very very rich which I was expecting I kind of knew what I was getting into just not one for the super oily amongst us I've got two patchology masks they are worth six dollars each now this is a brand that's more expensive in the UK than it is in America so these are actually eight pounds to buy individually I've said it before and I'll say it again I just don't think most sheet masks do anything worth eight pounds a pop do you know what I mean? They are a one-use product. It doesn't make any kind of lasting difference in your skin. It's just something that's going to give you that boost of brightness or hydration or whatever for the day. And then it's, you know, it's gone. And you, you would need to use it again the next day to maintain that. Which is the same of any skincare product, of course. But I feel like, you know, if you've got a jar of something, then you're getting several uses out of it. So you don't mind maintaining it. But if you've got one use of something and then it's another £8 to get another use of it, you're not going to be doing that on a daily basis. But as a general rule, I do very much like the Patchology products. Um, I particularly like the Illuminating one, which I've not used up here. And I very much like getting them as gifts or something. Like, I don't think I would spend my own money on them, but I do think they are probably like the best of the best of the sheet masks that I've tried. Just above the Soothing Patchology one, I've got the Leaders Bye Bye Impurities. That was worth $5. And I used that up. I think you saw me using that in my Dublin vlog. Probably quite a good one for just after a plane. If you find that plane kind of clogs you up and makes you a bit blackheady. Or if you use the Ceramiden one and, you know, soothe your skin that way and then find you're a bit blackheady quite a good one. Along the same lines there's the Leader's Tea Tree Mask um, at the bottom left there. That was worth five dollars and I used that just after I arrived in London. So again it was just post plane and I'd just come off my period as well at that time so my skin was quite kind of oily and quite congested and I do feel as much as I've just said with other sheet masks it's, it's a one-off product that you then need to use more than once to maintain if you get those kind of sheet masks that are like tea tree or whatever, if they're more for bringing down spots, you maybe do only need to use that one. It's more of a specific issue that you're targeting rather than just putting like a general boost of hydration or whatever into your skin. So I do quite like the sheet masks that are sort of tea tree or like charcoal or whatever for specifically for when my skin is breaking out. So I did like that one and I would definitely use it again. And then the one above that is from Leaders as well. No, it's not. It's from Mediheal and it is their whitening sheet mask worth $3.99. And that was absolutely fine. Again, that's just back to a kind of burst of brightening and hydration that you would need to use constantly to maintain. So I think it's fine, but I wouldn't rush to repurchase it. But all in all, that's six sheet masks out of my collection. So I'm quite happy with that. And in addition to the sheet masks, I finished up four traditional masks. The first of which is the Chanel Camellia Repair Mask. This was five mils worth $5.50. And I feel kind of about that the way that I said I felt about the Chanel Serum. It was fine, it wasn't bad in the slightest, but I didn't feel like it was mind-blowing or anything like that, so I wouldn't actually go and pay for it. Next to that we've got the Clarins SOS Hydra. Now I love that SOS Hydra eye cream from Clarins. I think if you've got sensitive skin it's a really, really good one. But I just kind of feel the, the, the face mask is okay. Like I love the eye mask, but 
the face mask is just fine you know if I got it again I would use it up again but I don't think I would rush to repurchase it then next to that we've got the fresh rose face mask that was worth nine dollars and thirty cents I have got another one of them to use up and I will use it up but I don't think I would actually go and pay for it. I like Fresh as a company. I feel like I'm very attracted to the aesthetic of Fresh. I feel like most of their products are just okay for me. You know, I do think they're fine, but I think they're quite expensive for just being fine. Um, I feel like I keep trying Fresh things and I keep like wanting to find something that I really, really love, but everything's just it's just kind of okay. If I had it again, I would use it again, but I wouldn't rush to repurchase it. That's kind of how I feel about it. And then the last mask that I've used up is the Peter Thomas Roth Irish Moor Mud Mask. This was 14 mils and it was worth $5.45. I feel a bit like mud masks are all just kind of different degrees of, of pulling out and drying. I didn't feel like this was an overly drying one. Um, but I, I did feel it did a good job of like taking down my blackheads so I would potentially repurchase that one but I don't think there's really much of a need to pay for an expensive mud mask so it would be a, it would be a price related thing when the decision needs made about which one to repurchase because I have got plenty to use up still in my collection unfortunately. From my treatment products I used up this MOA or MOA Magic Organics Apothecary. This is just called the Green Balm and this is one of those products that I ended up using as a foot cream. It's a sort of multi-use product and when I first got it I was using it as a lip balm and a sort of eczema ointment but I definitely found it's one of those products as with many organic-y things that is better used fresh. Um, so when I came back to it it sort of ended up in a box and I came back to it this year and it kind of all hardened and solidified so I ended up using it up on my feet not that it took many uses because obviously it's a little tiny thing I feel like for me I've got such an extensive collection that these sort of products that are going to have a short shelf life are just I just don't have space for them at the moment I'm not going to get to them quick enough so I wouldn't go out and repurchase this at the moment but if you are somebody who only has one of each type of product and you are going to finish it within its shelf life, you know this was absolutely fine um, and I did enjoy it. it. Just It's it's just not practical for me to buy products that are going to have, I mean obviously all products have a shelf life to an extent. Most of mine, I do feel like with skincare, I get through things before they've gone off, but I couldn't say that about this. So this is a particularly short shelf life and that just doesn't suit me at all. Another product from my 12 Pans of Christmas Project Pan, my Omrovitsa Queen of Hungary Mist, worth $28.50. I won't talk about this too much because I talked about it obviously in my Project Pan finale. I like this but definitely wouldn't rush to repurchase it. I, I'm not somebody who uses facial sprays unless I am specifically making an effort to use them because they're in a project. So there is absolutely no point in me buying any more of them basically. And another project pan item, this is my hand cream worth $15.82. This was absolutely fine. I didn't love the smell of this, it's one of the CBD ones. It was fine, I liked the texture, I would maybe try a different hand cream from this brand in a different smell but I've got other hand creams and I'm not particularly precious about hand creams so I'll just kind of use whichever ones come my way and my last product that I've finished up is the Fresh Brown Sugar Body Polish. This smells amazing and I did really really like it but again with Fresh it was worth $39. I feel like it's quite expensive for what it actually is which is a body scrub and exfoliator it was I really liked the texture of it it was one of the ones that was in um you know like a sort of oil base and then it's it's quite scrubby and I that's what I like in exfoliator I did really like the product but it's probably too much money for what it actually is if I'm honest so I don't think I'd be repurchasing this particular one and that is the end of it we have an empty box so they were, so that was 30 skincare items worth $450.25. Adding that to the two perfumes worth $66, the three hair products worth $17.39 and the four makeup items worth $64.20. That was a grand total of $597.84 worth of product used across 39 products in total. Those were my November and December empties so I will do a Makeup Rehab 2021 wrap up where I will talk about what I've used up 
all in this year about whether I hit my inventory reducing goals or not and what my plans are for 2022 because as you'll have gathered from what I've said I've still got an extensive collection I've still got loads to use up and we are nowhere near done with the beauty rehab life on my YouTube channel so I hope you've enjoyed this video thank you very much for watching and I will see you in my next one bye